and we are hanging out with the one, the only Jonathan Butler. I don't know whether to shout for you or to just. Do I say Tata? Yes, you can definitely say that. <laughs> I'm going to teach you another one. Niaji. Niaji. Yeah. Yes. Niaji Karibu. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, of course, um, there's so many people who are in my DMs right now just saying, oh my God, just tell Jonathan Butler. Oh, I love him. Patricia Kihora is already in my DMs right now telling yeah. me. I love this guy. I'm so we I feel so privileged sitting next to you. Oh my god. Well I'm privileged to sit next to you. Look great, you know, Thank like you. your jacket, like your glasses. Thank you. you <laughs> Thank the, you. Yeah, the full on vibe. So yeah. yeah. Thank you. It's, it's so for those of you who are probably hearing of uh, Jonathan Butler, you've b- we've been telling you that uh, uh come tomorrow, yes, tomorrow the biggest concert is going down. Do you know that when he was a young boy growing up in Cape Town, at the age of seven, he started touring? Is this true? Because I read this and I was like, seven? No, I toured much earlier than that. I was, I was, on the, I was touring since I was five years old. What? And, and making music and traveling to uh, Zimbabwe, you know, uh, Angola, uh, Namibia, um, just all over, Lesotho, um, you know, Transkei. I was traveling all over the place. You so know. you've basically been touring your whole life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm 62 today. Oh, and, uh, dude, not today. Birthday. Not today. <laughs> but this this month of October was my is my birthday month. Yeah. Ah, happy yeah. birthday to yeah. you. Yeah. And yeah. at the yeah. age of five, like I know African parents like want to make kids work as soon as they are out of the belly. And that was kind of like my mother. Five. <laughs> five. <laughs> yeah. Because when I when I saw this start, I, I remember asking myself. At the age of five, what had I mastered? What had you mastered? Well, the thing is, you know, I was, I was in the family. I come from a family of musicians, so it was just in my system. It was in my body to make music because I, I, I was birthed into it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. So by the time I was five, I was. I, as a matter of fact, today you see a lot of stuff on social media where kids are. I saw a, a young drummer who's eight years old, and yeah. she's from Japan and yeah. she's incredible. I saw this yeah. guy, I think he's six or five. He produces yeah. music, he arranges elements, he's yeah. like taught. He's yeah, like, well yeah. that's, you know, so I think that's how my brain worked. I, I just, I saw the guitar, I started fooling around with it, I started teaching myself how to play it. And so by the time I was seven or eight, whatever, I was playing, you know, guitar, I was, I was transposing from guitar to piano. Mm-hmm. So I taught myself how to play piano. And so, um, but it was really from the musical side of my family. Everybody was in music. So basically 57 years of touring, approximately. I've been, yes, around 50-something years, yeah. And so what has been one of your most memorable tours that you've done, a place that you've gotten to, and it's been etched in your memory till date? I think one one of the two most amazing touring experiences that I've had, well, first of all, as a five year old touring was, it was like a childhood. It was so much excitement yeah. being five and seeing different countries and different places. But I think for me, it was, it was opening for Whitney Houston for four months in the States when my album went international, the yeah. Lies record, the double album. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then for Eric Clapton, I was touring with him for three weeks in London and I opened for him at the Royal Albert Hall. Yeah. And that was two weeks sold out shows wow. at the Royal Albert Hall. Wow. And I mean, it was Mark Knopfler, it was Phil Collins, it was just every night there'll be a different. Um, but my all time favorite is Stevie Wonder, play, singing with him in uh, at the Verizon uh, Arena in, in New York, uh, in the Washington, D.C. Wow. And he called me up on stage and I, uh, I performed uh, one of his tunes with him, you know. Yeah. So that was, you know, that's one of my true highlights. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you are an international artist of note. And every time we see you performing on stage, you have this smile, you light up. When the guitar, you, you get in, it's like you're in a zone somewhere there. Yeah. And, you know, I, I see you performing jazz. I see you in your R&B phase. Yeah. Right? And then yeah. I see you in your gospel phase. Yeah. And it's got me thinking, you know, it's like, it's like one person speaking multiple languages right yeah which yeah. language are you most fluent in? well i'm i don't like to be boxed in i think you know growing up in, in the in the music industry and growing up in recording industry where they they, they have to put you in the box to kind of give you a you know to kind of make sure that the dynamics the the demographics yeah. are are suited for you mm-hmm. so when i was a teenager i was had i had always you know young fans yeah. But now that I'm 62, my fans are p- 
probably my age and older. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then there's new, there's new young people out there that, you know, that know about me in America mm -hmm. and, and South Africa. But they'll always come up to me and say, you know, can you sign an autograph for, for my dad? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, or can you sign an autograph for my mother? Yeah. Because she turned me on to your music, mm -hmm. you know. So I think what it really is, it's sustainability in this music. It, it it's a sign of sustainability. When you can have a career this long yeah. and it can trick it down into the, to the grandchildren, yeah. Yeah. it means that you really have sustainability and I think that's the most important thing for anybody listening this morning that's a musician you know even though right now it's all about the beats yeah. and afro beats and you writing in your little apartment and with your laptop but you got to also think about the bigger picture mm. will you still be relevant when you're 60 will you be relevant when you're 70 will these fans come and listen to you when you're 70 mm. and are you still making music that has um it's got to have legs, mm. you know. Like back in the day when we made LPs, you know, we listened to the whole LP, you know, and, and we looked who played on the LP. Yeah. And, and, and we could tell the songs, if the songs had legs, you know, we called it legs. Yeah. So that 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, you can still pull that LP out and put it on. Mm. And you wow. go like, that is unbelievable That's recording. Yeah. So I think, it's about longevity for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not really about whether the kids like me or not or if I'm relevant to them, but it's about longevity and making music that would stand the test of time. That, that's the legacy that I want. All right. And I know, uh, if I'm not mistaken, one of your sons is an American football player, right? Yeah, I just, um, yeah, he's 6'3". Uh, yeah. And he played for the New York Jets, and uh, he's the linebacker, so he will sack you. <laughs> he'll, he'll pick you up and throw you on the ground. But yeah. when we get back, I want us to just talk about, because we're talking about how your muse, you learned how to play music when That's you were right. five. And when we get back after we play your song, No Woman, No Cry, I think I want to find out more about, do any of you, have any of your children got in your gene? Have any of them got in your bone? Okay, we'll talk about that. <laughs> I've had all kinds of experience with my children. My, my, my daughter's going to be 39. My son's going to be 39, and my youngest is 35. Mm. Oh, wow. And uh, my oldest grandchild is 16. And wow. they all sing. Oh. Except for my son. Mm -hmm. um, he's my adopted son, but, yeah. but my children sing. They really do sing. Yeah. Are, they, are they getting into the family business of singing for no, business? No, my, just... my one daughter loves fashion, so she's in fashion. Mm. Yeah. Uh, actually, both do girls are in fashion, but uh, one's a psychiatrist, uh, a yoga therapist. Um, she's everything. She's a teacher. Um, <laughs> nice. She has a pop-up with her boyfriend. They do amazing food truck um, stuff. Mm. And so, yeah. They they got that entrepreneurial spirit in them, so you know they got their own thing. Yeah. That's 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 great. Yeah, your yeah. career has spanned decades, right? And you know, there's there's so many there's so many stories in there that a lot of maybe the younger generation might not be able to get the whole story. Right. And you find sometimes, uh, like you've got the new album, yeah. right? Ubuntu. And Ubuntu. Some yeah. people might hear you for the first time on Ubuntu. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But if you were to describe to maybe somebody who's hearing you for the first time, and you were to describe your music journey, yeah. what would you say? It's ever evolving, you know? I'm, I'm, you, you know, I like, to, I like to use this phrase, you grow where you plant it. Mm -hmm. And wherever I was planted, I grew. Mm -hmm. And I took in that environment alongside it because um, when I went to the States, I always wanted to be in America. Mm -hmm. um, because I lived, I started out in the UK, um, started, started out in South Africa, then went to UK, and I worked with Ruby Turner and Billy Ocean. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wrote, um, we produced If You're Ready, Come Go With Me yeah. for Ruby Turner. I uh, worked with Billy Ocean on some music, and then but my heart was really for the States because all the music I listened to mm -hmm. as a child was American yeah. R&B. Stevie Wonder, Donny Hathaway, Marvin Gaye, Aretha Franklin, all the great people. So when I got to the States, I just took on all of that amazing energy and, and, and went to clubs every night and mm -hmm. listened to jazz musicians playing and and it was it was just mind blowing for me, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm a self taught musician. So to go out and listen to music is was very important. And as a matter of fact, 
again, if there's any musicians listening to this conversation, mm -hmm. go out and listen to other people play mm. because you learn so much about your own, uh, you know, your own mistakes that you make on stage and also how you can take the tips from somebody else performing mm. and incorporate that into your show. Yeah. So I believe very strongly that it's important for artists to go listen to one another perform. You know what I mean? Wow. There's also, there's, you know, I mean, we're looking at an Africa that has changed. Yeah. You've toured, you're starting from five years, and yeah. now you're 62. Yeah. Africa has changed. When you were going to the States, when you were going to the UK, it was like, let's go listen to what they have. But yeah. right now, the world is turning into Africa. I love that. I mean, I've, I've always felt that was going to be that Africa was going to be the, uh, you know, the, the, the door mm -hmm. into um, the new, the new rhythms, the new grooves, and the new melodies. I, I think even people like Beyonce is tapping into African rhythms. Yeah. And, so, and what are you listening to from Africa? Me, I, you know, I've listened to, I listen to so many people. I wish I could find. Actually, I had, um, I used to love this cat Afro Traction. Have you heard of Af Afro Traction mm -mm. in Johannesburg? Mm -mm. This is just the one guy, and his music is so on point. Yeah. With, uh, um, wait, he's right in my. He's right here. There he is. Where is he? Uh, he's right here. After attraction, he's got three albums. Uh, and I, I mean, this guy makes me happy when I listen to his music. It makes and me happy. Are you listening to I'm a piano? Sounds like some some Zambian yeah, Malawian it's vibes. So, got some vibes of that. Side, so yeah. what I do is when I have a party at home mm -hmm. and I do a braai or a, what's it um what do they call a braai? It's a it's choma. Name. A cho here it's called choma. Choma. Yeah. Yes. When I have that in Los Angeles, I put this music on. Yeah. And they, you know, first I played it for my kids. They're like, Dad, take that music off. That music is so cool. So now, yeah. that's all they play. <laughs> Are you listening to I'm a piano? Because right now the world is. Is, is paying attention to South Africa, yeah. like big time. Mm. And also, I mean, West Africa also doing their I'm thing. excited about yeah? that. Yeah. I'm very happy about that because Ubuntu, my new record, it comes a little bit, you know, we've kind of went there mm. with Stevie Wonder's uh, Superwoman. Yeah. The grooves are kind of um, Ubuntu. Um, all of the stuff that I was trying to get to is to come back home to my roots and plug into what's happening here because... Mm. I, and I think that's always also a thing of being relevant. You, yeah. you gotta, you gotta be relevant if you want to reach young people, you know. Mm -hmm. But what young people miss, I think, is that I am a real, <laughs> I'm a real musician. I play the instruments. Mm -hmm. I don't use computers to manipulate. I use my my and I use my hands, <laughs> his brain, and, and his know, mind. And I use musicians in the studio. So I think, um, but there's nothing wrong with that either. You mm. know, I think it's cool if you can just do everything on your laptop. Yeah. And, but I think um, to to kind of be being relevant means you can reach young people, you can connect, and that's my thing. I like to connect with young people. In Cape Town, he knows. He knows most of the young musicians I, I hang out with. Yeah. My band, you'll hear tomorrow. And we cannot wait to see you connecting. I, we were here with Hans Fair, yes. Beatogs uh, from Kenya, Jacob yeah. Asio, Kaima and friends. We cannot wait to see. And I'm telling you this, you know that the continent is full of very young people. It's a very youthful yeah, continent. Yeah, and I would have liked to have a, you know, a, a master class just to kind of hear what their thoughts are yeah. Yeah. Know, about, about music and, um, and moving forward. You know, Because again, uh, you know, I, I really want them to see the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Will they still be relevant 60 years from now? Yeah. You know? Or will it just be a forgotten music? Yeah. Or is it just a trend? Is it just a flavor of the month? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Do you want to be a flavor of the month? That's cool. Because then you drive a Ferrari and then you crash it and then you got to find another Ferrari. Yeah. But if you want to have sustain sustainability, that means you have to learn how to craft a song, how to how to arrange a beautiful song, how to produce a beautiful song, and how to perform a beautiful song. And we can't wait to see you yeah. performing your beautiful song you know? tomorrow. And I want to draw you to some guys who I think you should work with while okay. you're here. That Hornsphere, sounds good. Hornsphere are fantastic. Oh, they're great. Young great. guys, there are four, uh, four horn quartet. If you can get a chance to work with them. Well, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask them this on the air. Before I leave Kenya, they have to give me uh, about 
six or eight grooves that I'll take to LA and work on it. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. In fact, we'll call one of them and let him know about that. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. You're I welcome. know we have to release you so that you can go somewhere else, but thank you so, so much. And remember, you can get your tickets on ticketyear2.com. Right now, they're going for 4,500 bob. Tomorrow, it's going to be 6,500 bob at the gate. So you want to get your tickets right now and come and enjoy the beautiful sounds of Jonathan Butler.